Good afternoon, folks, and thank you for tuning in. I would like to open up by thanking our legislators, the governor, and our state partners, Republicans, Democrats, and progressives, all working together with the governor as one Vermont to help us all. Thank you, Senator Westman, Representative Hill, and Representative Noyes. I believe some of you may be on the call today. I would uh, also like to echo this same level of cooperation and collaboration between the town and village of Johnson, all working together as one community of Johnson. As of the federal government, as I understand it, they have finally passed a, a very large $2 trillion bill and the president, I understand, has just signed it. During a Vermont Emergency Management briefing today, Representative Peter Welch was online and he was laying out some of the benefits for Johnson and local municipalities. And it sounds like it's gonna be a huge help for not only the governments of the state and the local municipalities, but as well for the businesses and individuals. So thank them for that as well. We have shared previously actions the select board, the trustees, and Johnson Emergency Management have taken. Johnson Emergency Management has phased out of the implementing action plans to a tweaking and monitoring these actions. As of now, are moving directly, or as we now are moving directly into the COVID-19 pandemic with positive cases within Lamar County, we all need to assume it is also in our community. Now is the time to stress the importance for each of us to practice the social distancing, washing our hands, and following other guidelines as set down by the CDC and Vermont Health Department. As we enter this time, Johnson's emergency management focus is now on the mental health and well being of our citizens while under some stressful and high anxiety times. First and foremost, take care of yourself, doing things that you enjoy, getting some fresh air, going for walks. Equally important is to check in with your friends, neighbors, and family by calling them regularly. If you or others you know are in need of help, please do not hesitate to reach out. You may call the governor's hotline at 211 or even call this municipal office at 635-2611 and we will direct you to the appropriate health agencies. Johnson Emergency Management is also currently exploring methods of maintaining community connectivity and social interchange while staying in compliance with the shelter in place executive order as issued by the governor. There will be more to come on this as we develop it. Some thoughts is using a, the method that we're using right now, outreach with uh, uh, things like this Zoom technology and having some anything from a entertainment hour or some people with talent in the community, like a Gary Clark, we may ask him to play the guitar for a half hour and just a way for people to get their mind off of the coronavirus for a little bit of time and try to connect with the local community. Gary wasn't aware of that yet either, but we may be reaching out to him. As I said, more will come on that as it develops. We are also looking at out of the box thinking for getting internet access to those who are in locations where it is not available. Obviously there are no easy answers here. If it was, it would have been done years ago. We have a lot of citizens in Johnson trying to work from home. We have a lot of students that are now being schooled at home and the internet become, has become a very vital role in that. The select board and trustees are exploring options available to us for when we come out of the other side of this COVID-19 pandemic. We are expecting some of our citizens and local businesses will be stressed financially. What do we have for tools available to help? We are looking into this as well. The town has set up a special COVID-19 page on our website 
to upload community announcements, links to the CDC and Vermont Health Department websites, as well as our volunteer form. That website is thetownofjohnson.com backslash COVID-19, or to my left behind me is the web address as well. Chairman Gordy Smith of the Village Trustees will be providing a statement, followed by a statement from Principal Dave Manning from the Johnson Elementary School. As an awareness, we also have other agency substance experts on the line that are available to answer specific questions that anyone may have. Uh, before we open up to questions or comments, for benefit of those phoning in, please introduce yourself and any organization that you may be affiliated with. I would also remind the speakers to avoid using acronyms as the general population may not know what they stand for. I will now, oh, let me first introduce myself. I'm Eric Osgood, I'm with the Vermont of the uh, Johnson Select Board. I'll now turn it over to Gordy Smith. Thank you, Eric. Hopefully you can all hear me. It's a privilege to uh, serve on this town emergency management structure. We have a lot of resources, a lot of capacity for what's coming. We've done a lot of planning. We're planning each day along with all the other groups that we're involved with. Um, there's a lot of administrative planning so far from the state, county, local and federal levels, but I'm gonna give one interesting one from the, I call it the grassroots level. I was talking with RJ West, our fire chief yesterday, and he informed me of uh, a system. It's from the Vermont Fire Academy. What they've set up is each county in the state has one representative that represents all county fire departments in their county. That person is a representative to the 14 counties of Vermont Fire Academy. And some of the examples of the benefits of this are if something at the state level needs to be disseminated quickly to the fire departments, it will go from the Vermont Fire Academy to the county reps and then to each uh, county or each town fire department in that county. Or if the fire departments in the towns have questions or suggestions or policies, they would go to the county rep, the county reps will bring it all up to the Vermont Fire Academy. It's a, it's a network I think is gonna work well. One example would be we all know there's a hot zone in, in uh, Chittenden County. We're all gonna learn from it. So the, the decisions that are made or are not made will go to the Vermont Fire Academy through their sources and it will come back to every fire department in the state at the local level. So I think that's a, a good system. The other thing I wanted to add is that springtime, you know, some of us don't realize it, but change your batteries in your smoke alarms, carbon monoxide detectors. Um, some of your detectors after five years, it's number 10, you, have, you should throw them out. So if you change your batteries, it might save, save your life, but it might save a, a, a call for the firefighters, which we all have to be in close proximity and enter your houses. It might save a call for uh, somebody getting sick or doing other things. So, and some of the newer carbon monoxide smoke detectors have sealed units and the batteries are good for 10 years, then you throw the whole unit out. So that's a good, which step in the right direction. So fire safety, and carbon monoxide safety and so forth. And I've asked Meredith if she would say a few things on behalf of the village utilities, and then it can be turned back to Eric. Thank you. So hi everyone, uh, this is Meredith Dolan, the village manager. I just wanted to offer a few quick words on um, our utilities. Um, I wanted to let everybody know that um, our, well, our staffing has been reduced for about the last week and a half in terms of the number of people coming in each day. Um, our full crew is available for any emergencies, um, power outages, or water and sewer emergencies. Um, so you would follow the normal procedures uh, for calling those in, um, calling the office during the day, um, our main number, or calling our uh, after hours dispatch, which I will post that number again um, on the Facebook page, and it's also on the town's um, COVID-19 page as well. Um, but I just want to reassure people that if you have any emergencies or concerns about any of your utilities, we still have plenty of staff, the full staff available to address those. Um, and we're, we're here to help if you need us. Uh, we're not going to be doing sort of voluntary or non-essential projects for the time being. Um, but uh, for anything critical, we're certainly here to help. Um, I'll turn it back over to Eric now. 
Thanks. Thank you, Gordy and Meredith. I uh, would now turn it over to Dave Manning. I have some updates from the school. As you may have seen last night, Governor Scott ordered the closure of all Vermont schools for the rest of the school year. So we will obviously be following that order and working with students in a remote learning um, mode for the remainder of the year. We are working with our district uh, partners. We talk, the principals talk every day with the superintendent and with each other. Uh, we talk every day. So there's a lot of communication trying to figure out the best way to make these plans. We've been working under the mindset of a, a multiple week option. Now we're looking at some of homeschooling or, or distance learning. So we are preparing for that and figuring out how to get additional resources to kids and additional uh, learning experiences. Uh, we are, as I said last meeting, we are offering food service to all students, all children in the community, ages eight and that doesn't matter whether they're attending or school or anybody eight and under is eligible for free meals. That's price for lunch. We do that either through curbside pickup um, at uh, with through a bus route where it'll come out to wherever the closest bus stop is to your house or through picking it up at Johnson Elementary School if that's more convenient. And uh, if you have more information about that, you can email me uh, and I can get you signed up for food service. Uh, and then the last thing on, on us is that we have a, um, a free uh, open access internet that we've pushed out as strong a signal as we can from the school. So if you're at the school, behind the school where we have the angled parking, all of those spots have pretty good coverage. In front of the school, um, there's some uh, like the basketball court and the playground structure and that whole area has coverage. If you get farther away from the building down by the swings, you might not get coverage. But if there's people needing internet access, they are certainly welcome to come sit you know, in their cars or, or get out and sit near the school building and they can get free internet, no password required. And that's an option as well. I will say I saw quite a few emails today about broadband access. And we do have a couple of families that are struggling with internet access. Most of them have some capacity to access the internet, but there are definitely people that either have no access or what's more often is people that have access, but it's not fast enough to, to get the job done. So they're having trouble if they've got a parent trying to work from home and a kid trying to work from home. Um, they're having connectivity issues where they can't all do the things they need to be doing. And, and that, I think, is a real problem in our community, as well as in my own home. When I have my kids trying to do video conferences with their teachers and I'm trying to do video conferences for work all at the same time, we can't, our internet can't handle it. So that's a real problem in this whole rural area. Uh, so that's kind of it from the school standpoint. There'll certainly be more information to come. We're sending out emails to the community, voicemails, uh, stuff on our Facebook page. So there's a lot of information that uh, you can get out of the school. Thank you, David. Uh, I believe Sheriff Mark Koo has a few things he would like to say, and then I will open it up to some other agency reps that would like to say a few words before we open up to anybody for any questions. So Roger, if you're there, go ahead. First of all, I'd just like to tell everybody that uh, we've been pretty busy with planning at the Sheriff's Department. Services are continuing, uh, Sheriff's services are continuing um, uh, as, as they have been. We're taking a few precautions in terms of patrol. Uh, since we are a primary law enforcement agency for Johnson, Hyde Park, and Wolcott, uh, we are you know, part of the critical infrastructure along with the, uh, certainly the, the 911 call taking. So what we're doing is uh, um, we're just going to take complaints that can be taken over the telephone uh, uh, and, and we're going to encourage uh, uh, for your safety and the safety of the deputies that, that we uh, um, conduct those type of cases that can be done over the phone um, in that manner. However, uh, like we just had a rollover accident in Hyde Park here this afternoon, we're going to continue to respond uh, uh, to any type of cases where the response is the appropriate uh, action. Uh, you will see the deputies and, and, and you know, when I can, when I can swing it, even more deputies than usual being very busy, uh, visible in the community um, uh, to protect uh, 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 people's property and, and what have you and uh, just to reassure the public. So uh, no no, no plans on just sitting in the office for us. We're, we're going to be out there. Uh, 911, we've taken steps to, to further isolate those folks. They have to come to work. They're critical. Uh, you know, they're part of the six PSAP, the six public, ans uh, public safety answering points in the state. 
And uh, if any one of them goes down, uh, those phone calls automatically go to the others. If uh, Williston has a real busy day and all of their call takers are tied up, then usually those calls roll out to to us and other uh, uh, PSAPs in the state. So uh, uh, for those people that are interested in, in what we're doing with civil uh, process service, uh, you know, uh, lawsuits and evictions and all of that kind of stuff, uh, we're, we, until we hear differently from the court, but we were told a couple of days ago by the administrative court judges that we have to continue with that service, which uh, doesn't make me real comfortable because that's, you know, a lot of face-to-face contacts, but uh, we will continue. Uh, we are very slowly getting some personal protective equipment for all of the deputies. So uh, you may see them with face masks and glasses and gloves when uh, they're out and about dealing with the public. Uh, we don't have a choice. We we can't um, work from home. So our job is out on the road, and uh, everybody in the department is committed to uh, providing the, the service that we always have. That's uh, what I uh, – one last thing. As we're working with – Volunteers throughout the county. Uh, we've uh, I've appointed um, um, Reserve Deputy uh, Eric Dodge uh, as my point of contact to work with volunteers in the communities to deliver groceries, uh, drugs, or whatever um, uh, that is needed. Uh, I believe that Kyle is working um, that aspect. Uh, Eric in, in Johnson. Uh, but we've got some folks in Hyde Park, and, and we'll be working with some folks in Mooresville as well. So um, so you, you may see us doing that kind of service as well. Thank you. Thank you, Roger. Uh, is there any other organization or agency rep that would like to speak before we just open it up to anyone for questions or, or concerns? Eric, this is Ellen McCulloch Lovell at the Vermont Studio Center. We can hear you. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to thank the sheriff's office and anybody who is around town for extra vigilance of our many buildings right in the village while we're closed, because uh, we're down to uh, two and a half people um, who are necessary workers related to um, maintenance and safety. So, um, neighbors and everybody who could just be extra pairs of eyes to keep those buildings secure would be very appreciated. And the second thing I wanted to say is that we're working with Principal Manning to make sure that um, some art kits that we're putting together for um, families with children uh, are either mailed or delivered to all families associated with uh, Johnson Elementary. Thank you, Ellen. Is there anyone else? Oh, Hi, this is Leah with Northern Vermont University, and I just wanted to let folks know that uh, this week uh, NVU uh, made the painful decision to uh, stay with remote learning for the rest of the spring semester, and we have postponed our uh, class of 2020 commencement. We'll hold that in a separate commencement ceremony um, in May of 2021. So we'll have two commencement ceremonies um, in 2021. Um, I also wanted to let folks know that we still have about 40 students remaining on campus, both 40 on our Linden campus and 40 on the Johnson campus. Um, these are students who either uh, were not able to leave before the uh, governor's deadline for the governor's edict or the this is the best safest place for them to live we still have uh, students on our campus okay thank you leah anyone else this is valerie Valcor with the department of health um morrisville district office it covers the moyle um and i i first of all i just I'm very, so very thankful of our county and, and the, the collaboration and the work that's happening. Um, it's just very impressive. So thank you, everyone. And I appreciate all the consistent messaging that's going out in terms of 
um, encouraging folks to stay home and stay safe and to uh, isolate themselves and observe for symptoms and if they have symptoms to call their provider. Uh, testing for COVID is, is getting a little easier all the time. Um, and uh, now that we have more testing ability, uh, more people will get tested. And, and because of that, we're gonna see higher rates. Um, if you look on our health department website, um, healthvermont.gov and just go to the Johnson website and you'll see the link there. Um, you can see the number of cases in the state and we're up to, I believe, 184 for the state and six for Lamoille County. Um, now, a lot, of the, a lot of people around the state at this time who are positive are, are sheltering at home. Um, there's not, the numbers in the hospitals right now are not, um, they're not large, but we're still in the early stages. And, um, so I would say at this point, you know, and uh, and I, I'm not sure if Copley's on the line, but um, they have um, uh, expressed thanks for for folks who have donated. Um, I think a, a request has gone out on from Porch Forum and um, thanking folks for that. Um, and at this time, um, you know, we're just trying to make sure that different agencies are communicating with each other. Um, and for one example, there's a there is a, a task force that throughout the state is trying to grapple with the challenges of, of folks who are experiencing homelessness and how do we serve them during this this time. So just know that there are folks working on that and um, to try and set up systems. And, and how it will trickle down to all the different counties is to be seen, but um, there are people throughout the state working on those issues, so, and many others. And thank you, Eric, for coordinating all of this and, and your team, so. And I'm, I'm available for questions. Thank you, Valerie. Is there anyone else? Hi, Eric, Lisa Cruz. And I have some information from Johnson Recreation and also on behalf of Lillian from the Food Shelf. Um, food Shelf is operating regular hours, Tuesday and Friday, 9 to noon, Wednesdays 4 to 6. The food is being distributed from the front porch, and they've asked if you could call ahead. If you're heading down that way, it does help them out. Um, I will put those numbers to call ahead on the Johnson Recreation Facebook page uh, at the conclusion of this meeting. They are in need of donations. They still have a drop box at the front of Sterling Market, and they are accepting checks to P.O. Box 17, Johnson, Vermont, 05656. On the recreation front, we've had all of our spring sports and classes canceled at this point, and refunds are being issued for those. Um, the Recreation Committee and I are working to come up with some things for us to do as a community, um, trying to keep us from becoming too isolated. And so we'll have some community challenges that we can work on together. Those will be posted on the Johnson Facebook page. So Johnson Recreation on Facebook. Thank you. Thank you again, Lisa. And on behalf of Lillian as well, is there anyone else? Uh, Eric? Yes. Hi, it's Kat Gallagher. I sort of am breezing in uh, before I head to another webinar, but I, I thought it was important to just thank uh, all of our students, staff, families for the hard work that they are doing to make this new way of learning um, not only tenable, but, um, but very, very workable. I have never seen our teachers work as hard as they're working. Um, and they're also being very helpful about reaching out to families to try to make accommodations. Um, there are you know, some things that are a work in progress and I think families are understanding that. And we have seen flexibility and um, adaptability from, from all, all uh, factions. So I'm incredibly happy and pleased and we're going to, we're going to keep going. Thank you, Kat. That was Kat, the superintendent. And I would just echo, I know what she's referring to. 
Gordy's wife and my wife are both school teachers, and if they make it through this without pulling all their hair out, they'll be doing well. Anyone else? Hello, this is Jessica Bickford from Healthy Lamoille Valley and also a Johnson resident. And I just wanted to let people know that um, today, Commissioner Health Commissioner Levine um, put out a new website for those who may be struggling with substance use disorder or, or just substance use in general during this time. And that website is vermonthelplink.org. And uh, that has prevention, recovery, and treatment uh, information on it. Again, I'll put it in the notes, but it's vermonthelplink.org. Thank you. Thank you, Jessica. And we will try to put that on our COVID-19 page as well. Did you want to also speak to the library? Sure. Um, at this time, uh, library services are suspended, um, and, but the, there is internet access in the parking lot. And Jean is regularly posting, um, there are some state online um, resources. And so those are on the um, Johnson Public Library websites. Thanks. Thank you, Jessica. Anyone else? Hey, Eric, this is Greg Stefanski. Hello, Greg. Uh, Johnson resident, and um, uh, we're doing some work with um, uh, the Recovery Center. I'll just mention briefly, the Recovery Center in Morrisville um, has uh, closed its doors, but is uh, open for uh, services. So uh, calling or checking in, um, especially if, if you were folks who uh, were getting supports through groups or recovery coaches. Uh, so help is still there. It's uh, just going to be delivered in a, in a new format, um, like everything else these days. Um, and also, um, uh, most of my work uh, these days is over at uh, Capstone Community Action in Morrisville. Um, and just to let folks know that uh, a lot of financial supports and services and also supports related to housing. Um, there's a lot that's been happening in our community to uh, develop backup supports to the shelter. Uh, the Lamoille Community House in Hyde Park. And so um, if supports are needed there to reach out. And also on the food front, um, was glad to hear the quick update about the Johnson Food Shelf. Uh, but we also saw this week how um, uh, delicate that system of, of care is. Uh, the Lamoille Community Food Share uh, here in Morrisville um, unexpectedly closed their doors on Wednesday due to some concern about some volunteers uh, and their illnesses, and uh, it was, it's a, if folks don't know, it's a food shelf that's open six days a week, but it just went offline. Um, the good news was uh, Skinny Pancake out of Burlington uh, put together a donation of several mm -hmm. hundred meals uh, that were delivered um, to Lamoille County, and they were able to be um, shared at Lamoille County Mental Health and also distributed from uh, the capstone site uh, here in Morrisville. So right now what we're trying to do is, is borrow from some of the incident command and backup systems that we're seeing the town put in place uh, and make sure that those are also in place for our uh, social services uh, and, and medical care as as well. So, and I'm, I'm borrowing from the Eric Osgood um, uh, book of uh, promoting things behind his uh, over his shoulder and give us a call at Capstone 888-7993 um, if you have questions. There are some funds that are being developed to help people who lose income uh, due to employment layoffs or, or slowdowns related to the coronavirus. So um, if folks need the financial help, uh, give us a call and we'll see what we can do. Thank you, Greg. You're welcome. Is there anyone else? Hi, Eric. Uh, it's Michael Hartman from uh, Lamoille County Mental Health. I just want to uh, make sure folks know that we remain open, uh, although not uh, not immediately accessible face to face. We uh, are seeing folks if uh, if it's absolutely necessary, but we uh, are doing telephone and video connections with people um, and. Uh, mm -hmm. Our crisis line continues to operate 888-8888 um, after hours, and our usual number is uh, available as well. And we have some COVID-related information on our website at lamoyle.org, which um, has uh, information about how to access services right now under the banner of COVID response. So. Uh, 
Uh, if you go to that, folks can find, uh, if they're trying to get services here, already have a service provider here, they can find out how to connect with that provider. If they need to get hooked up with a service provider, that will help them direct it that way. Thank you, Michael. I would expect we'll get that contact info uploaded on our COVID-19 page as well. Hey, Eric, it's Dan Noyes. Hey, Dan, how are you today? I'm doing well, thanks. And yourself? Not bad. Hey, I just want to let folks know that um, I'm available if they need any help with state government. Um, I'm, I'll make sure that everyone has my contact information through the Johnson uh, webpage there. If anyone has any questions, they can just give me a call on what's going on with the state. Glad to talk to them or email, either way. Thank you. Thank you, Dan, and thank you for all you're doing down there in the state house. Anyone else? If not, let's open it up for anyone who has any questions or concerns they'd like to be brought up before us. Uh, this is Michael from Green Mountain Access Television. We are a, a public access TV station located in Hyde Park. We are in the Tech Center. Uh, I just wanted to say thank you for all of the organizations in the county that are working so diligently on uh, each one of your projects. I just wanted to also say that uh, we are still currently broadcasting and there's a demographic of Vermont that may not have internet but does have cable access and we're trying to fill that hole. Uh, we're looking on the internet constantly for all of the events and all of the information that you're posting today and we're trying to consolidate that more in a concise manner and then putting that on a community calendar to broadcast. So if any of your organizations would like to amplify what you're working on, uh, feel free to forward an email to us and I'll post it in the chat. Thank you all. Thank you, Michael, for that. Anyone else? Okay, like I said, let's open it up to anyone who would like to bring something up, ask a question, have any concerns. Well, everyone, I thank you for joining us and we're gonna to try to do this regularly every Friday afternoon at five o'clock. Thank you for joining. Good night. <laughs>